Hi everyone, welcome to Grace and Glory Homeschooling. If this is your first time here, my name is Michaela. I'm a homeschool mom of 15 years. I have three kids, age 21, 17, and nine, and I've been married to my husband for 23 years. This channel serves um, to share encouragement to moms and homeschool moms. I filmed a couple years ago a video about all the books that I read in the year 2020. I read a lot during the pandemic. And then in 2021, I kind of fell off and I didn't read so much. And then at the start of 2022 for this year, I decided I really wanna get back to reading as much as I can um, to grow um, just in myself, to learn new things and to keep my mind fresh. So I made a challenge for myself at the beginning of the year, kind of a resolution. I don't really do resolutions. <laughs> I made a challenge. And I'm happy to say that I read 12 books this year so i was able to read at least one a month and i'm really excited that i was able to meet that goal so i'm going to share those books with you in case you would like to see um maybe some new books and recommendations books i liked or i didn't like and um hopefully this will encourage you if you're looking for some new things to read in 2023 so this january i started off and the first book i read is you shall be praised this is a 40 day devotional and this book is special because it's written by my friend, my real life friend, Jamie De Silva, And this is her second book. If you go back and you watch the video where I shared books I read in 2020, the first book I started off that year was her first book, which is all about Psalms 23. This one is all based on Proverbs 31. And I've been a Christian since I was a little girl. So I've been walking with the Lord a long time. And these are, you know, um, very popular chapters of the Bible that we've probably all read multiple times, but Jamie does an amazing job of breaking down this devotional to be an expository study. You go verse by verse and you have time to reflect and write and listen to the Lord, to pray, to ask him questions. And um, I love her books. And so they're really good for the busy homeschool mom because the font's big and the chapters are short. And even if you feel like, gosh, I have a hard time keeping up with something, you can do 40 days and, you know, 15 minutes a day and you're really going to be blessed. I love this book. It's available on Amazon. Okay, then the second book I read in February of this year by Priscilla Shearer is Discerning the Voice of God. This one is a much um, heavier read. It's not a quick read, I would say. I feel like Priscilla is um, amazing. Amazing woman of God. She has such wonderful insight, but it takes me a while to like digest what she's teaching because I have to read it and reread it and ponder it and think about it um, because it's, it's deep, you know? And so um, I highlighted so much of this book. I really loved it. There's an audio version if you don't feel like you have time to maybe read such a long and heavy book. I'm going to read you just a quick excerpt from it. She says, as God leads us through our journey of life with him, he marks out different avenues for each of us and individualized maps for us to follow. Others may not choose our road and they shouldn't if that's not the map that God has given them. Our job is not to judge others, but to give our fellow believers freedom to be whoever the Lord is leading them to be while we be sure that we're following whatever God's leading us in our own lives. And so it really goes through different steps on how to discern how the Lord is leading you in different ways. So if you're ready for a deep dive, I would definitely recommend this. You can probably get it on Amazon as well. Okay, then the next book, one of my favorite authors, I read books by her every single year, Joyce Meyer. This one is Enjoying Where You Are on the Way to Where You Are Going. This book is a little bit older, um, actually probably a lot older. I think I read this in the 90s, but it'd been so long. I wanted to read it again. And she has a saying, um, it says, uh, I'm not where I want to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. And so she, she breaks down that, you know, God has us on this journey. And sometimes we want to arrive at a destination a lot faster than what we think the Lord is doing. And it's hard for us to have joy and patience and um, chill out and let the Lord make his plans known. Um, but this book is, again, big font and short um, reads. And actually, some of the chapters are longer than others. So I broke them down um, into different days. And it's really easy to do that. 
a little excerpt from this one is when we stop trying to run the world and we stop trying to be the great choir director of life, it leaves us time to enjoy life. People are all headed somewhere. Let's enjoy them while they make the trip and let's enjoy where they are while they're on their way to their destination. Don't look at what's wrong with you or don't look at what's wrong with them. Make a decision that you're going to enjoy yourself and all the people that God has placed in your life along this journey. So she talks about relationships, people, places, you know, circumstances, outlooks. It's a really good book. Um, you can buy this one on Amazon as well. Then the next book, I ended up reading this one. Um, I took it with us on a road trip. We did a Route 66 road trip from California where we lived to Oklahoma and back. And it took us two weeks in our RV. We had so much fun and um, I'm so glad we took that trip, but we had long drive days while we were doing this. And so I went through this book. It's called My Name is Victorious by Lori Wilhite. Some of my friends here in California actually know Lori Wilhite personally because she has done ministry work in California. And I believe her husband and her um, are over a church in Las Vegas, which isn't very far from where we are in Southern California. And so I found this one actually at our local used bookstore, but it hadn't been used. And so I decided to get it. And I would say that it's actually fun if you do this with a group of women. I did it by myself because we were on the road, but it definitely lends way to do with a group. There is activity, activities, doodling, combine those words, um, drawing all different things that you do in every chapter. So let me show you, this is just like one example. And she talks about like, what's in your backpack of life? What are the things that you throw in your backpack and they weigh you down? And so like you color it and you write in all the things um, and there's scriptures and reflection, but it's very interactive. It's very um, short, easy, and it goes through every chapter is like, my name is Victorious. My name is special. My name is uh, unique. My name is, you know, whatever it happens to be. My name is confident. And it goes through different ways that you can see yourself as a woman of God. So um, this was really fun. And I would definitely recommend it if you're looking for a lighthearted workbook um, to do either with yourself or with a group. Then the next book, while we were on that road trip, doing our Route 66 trip, we stopped at a Mardell store in Texas. Now, I had never been to a Mardell store. If you live in an area that has one, I am totally jealous of you because we don't have those. And I was like, wow, this place is great. They have homeschool stuff. They have Christian books. They have t-shirts. Like, I absolutely love that store. And so while I was there, I saw this book in the bargain bin and I picked it up for the second half of the road trip. This is called Have More Fun and it's by Mandy, probably going to say it wrong, Arioto. Um, she is the Mops International CEO and um, this one was really different. It's not what I would say, hmm, how do I put it? Like some of the theology in it, I didn't quite agree with. Um, but it's a totally different outlook than my personality. And she talks about how to be um, a more fun, loving wife and mother and not be so serious and not take things so serious, which is something that I totally uh, tend to do naturally. Um, you know, I like to plan fun things for us to do, but I plan them. I d I'm not very spontaneous about them. And um, even when we're doing them, like I'll get somewhere, we'll go on a trip and I'm always um, assessing situations for like where the dangers are, what are the risks, um, is everyone safe and well, and are we prepared, do we have enough snacks? And so I'm not just really what I would say carefree, um, I'm a planner, I'm a leader. And so I'm always trying to <laughs> assess situations. So it was good to um, read this book, it's lighthearted, it's fun. And it um, goes through so many different topics to just try and help you to have more fun with your kids and to make memories and to um, not try to think about like, I will be happy when I finally do this or when this is finally accomplished or when I finally go here, when this finally happens. Like happiness is not um, once and for all. It's not something that once you get this, then you're happy. You know, it's something that is a lifelong journey and there's joy and there's pain and, you know, it's just a cycle of how life goes. 
So like I said, I didn't quite agree with all of her theology, but it's definitely worth giving um, a shout out to and, um, you know, give it a shot if you want something fun to read. The next book, I went back to Joyce Meyer and I read Get Your Hopes Up this summer. I was kind of going through a hard time where I was feeling down and just struggling with some different things going on in life. And so I picked up this book and she talks about how hope and faith are two different things and how, you know, you can have head knowledge and you can have faith, but that's not the same as having hope and hoping in the Lord and trusting in the Lord and finding joy in that hope and trust in the Lord, um, making the most of today and having the, the right mindset. So um, again, it's a short read. The font is big and it's very easy to go through and very lighthearted, but I would definitely recommend it. You can pick it up on Amazon. The next one that I read is kind of uh, different for me. It is a 30 day devotional, but also a diet plan. I went through a time this year where I was going through stress and um, just disappointment and frustrations in life. And I ended up gaining a lot of weight. And so um, I'm happy to say that I am now down 10 pounds from when I started this book, but I still have quite a ways to go. Um, but this book did help me and it's called Fit for My King by Sherry Rose Shepherd. This book's kind of vintage. Um, I believe it was revised in the early 2000s. You can kind of tell that some of it's a little bit outdated when you get into it, but she has recipes, she has scriptures, she has personalized prayers, and then she has um, actually different foods that you should avoid and um, even like a list of warning signs if you're starting or if you're noticing um, things about your body, like, you know, you're tired all the time or you have trouble getting a good night's sleep, you feel achy, um, you have digestive problems, different warning signs that your body gives off and how to really recover and restore yourself in the Lord by making changes and um, viewing yourself as a daughter of the King, making my body fit, to be the princess of the king. And so it's something that I did not follow it exactly to a T. Um, I adapted and you know took out some of the parts that I felt really were applicable to me. And so you don't have to like follow it exactly. But I have lost 10 pounds um, in this process. While I have been reading this book, I, I actually also got COVID, which I feel like in all honesty, that did contribute to my diet changes because I completely lost an appetite for weeks um, while I was recovering from COVID. So I actually had like no desire to eat. So just a side note, I know that it wasn't just totally the book that helped me to lose weight. I am not saying in any way that this book is the way that you're automatically going to lose weight. I am saying that it did help me and I felt like it gave me great ideas and just some great starting points and helped me shift my perspective on how to make sure that I am I'm keeping my body well, uh, ultimately for Jesus. So I feel better and so I'm able to serve him as well. The next book that I read um, is by Lisa Tierkirst and it's called It's Not Supposed to Be This Way. I've read multiple books by her before. This one's kind of uh, longer and it's definitely heavier. I wasn't prepared for how raw and emotional and um, heavy that this book was going to get. I was um, feeling like I was just going through some things and um, praying to the Lord and wanting some insight. And um, so I picked up this book, you know, to deal with um, just life's disappointments. Let's say that. And then I started reading her stories and I was like, wow, divorce, cancer, like way bigger issues than the issues that I am facing personally. So um, certain parts of it made me want to cry. It's, um, you know, not a lighthearted read by any means compared to some of the other books that I read this year, but it's so good. I really, really appreciate the end of it because she has, um, what is it called? Fighting words where these are specific scriptures that you proclaim over yourself when you are feeling disappointed and you're feeling upside down with life. And it's um, to remind you of how to see yourself the way that God sees you, how to um, deal with disappointments and anxiety and um, just different things that you face in life. So um, again, I feel like this is a book that is more so for people that are going through major things. 
Um, so if you're going through a major struggle, this is something that I would recommend, but I was like, wow, okay, my problems are not as big as what she dealt with. So it's not a, it's not a light read by any means, but now I'm going to get through, um, some of the books or get to some of the books that I read all year long. Um, this one is, what is it called? Homeschool 365 days. This is the mom version by the family man, Todd Wilson. They have a dad version. It's like a 365 day devotional for dads. And this one's for moms. And so I read this one. These are really short um, devotions and um, they're just Todd's thoughts. He is, he has a lot of kids. He has been homeschooling a long time. I remember hearing him. Um, I've been homeschooling for 15 years. And I remember hearing him way back when we first started, we went to some kind of conference and my husband, you know, loved hearing him because he's so funny. He brings comedy and humor to everything. And so um, there's not like scriptures or anything. These are just Todd's thoughts. And so you can see they're really short. Some days are even shorter than others, but they're fun if you just want to have some kind of homeschool blurb um, to add to your daily routine. Then the devotional that I read this year for 2022 is Mom Heart Moments by Sally Clarkson. Um, to be completely honest, I was a little bit disappointed in this book. I guess I had high expectations for it because I have some of Sally's other books. Um, I love her work. And so um, I was thinking that this daily devotional was going to be really good. It's like a scripture a day, a page and a prayer at the end. But it really wasn't my favorite devotional. Um, so I don't know. It's I didn't feel like it was super encouraging. I feel like a book for moms about your mom heart should encourage you. And I know Sally has so much wisdom and knowledge to share in motherhood and homeschooling, um, but I just didn't feel super encouraged by it. So that's my honest opinion. Then this last book, I will sing the praises over and over. I absolutely love it. One of my top faves, Mother Culture uh, for a Happy Homeschool by Karen Andriola. Karen is definitely one of my favorite authors. And this was the second time that I've read this book, but this time was different because I started an online book club with homeschool moms from all over the USA. And we met and we discussed it chapter by chapter. We went in depth and um, we really had some amazing discussions. We prayed together, we got to know each other and it ended up boiling down. There was more of us, a lot of us, less, less, less that stayed committed. And by the end of it, there were six of us and we have become such close friends. Um, I got Christmas presents and the mail from them. They are so sweet. I love them all. And I'm so glad that we got to go through this book together and got to make these relationships and these friendships form from this book. So if you're a new homeschool mom, if you're seasoned, it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter where you live, where your background is, this book is for you. I love Karen Andriola and our book club is going to be reading another one of Karen's books for the 2023 year. So I'm excited for that. Um, the, the first book on my list for 2023 to start in January is by Trisha Goyer. It's called The Grumble Free Year. Trisha is um, a homeschool mom. She's an adoptive mom. She has like eight kids or something, a huge family. <laughs> you see this. And um, this is a challenge to not grumble or complain, but to have a positive outlook for the year ahead. So that's what I'm gonna be starting on. I pick this up at the Bargain Bin and Mardell as well. So I'm excited to start that. If you've made it this far, thanks for hanging with me. I hope this was helpful to you. Be sure to like this video and subscribe, and I will see you guys again in 2023. Bye.